Hi, my name is Mr. Robert and I am the librarian at Roxell Elementary School and Highland Park Elementary School. Hi there, my name is Mr. Stack. I teach second grade at Highland Park Elementary. Hey, Mr. Stack, how are you doing? Oh man, Mr. Robert, it's really good to see you. I'm doing great. I'm loving all the sunshine. How about you? How are you holding up? I'm holding up well. The sunshine has been a blessing. Absolutely. Yes. I've enjoyed that. <laughs> How's your teaching going? Oh my goodness. Well, it's been so good to see all of my students. We've been having lots of lessons online. We've been a little flexible with the camera, but we've been doing math. We've been doing reading. We've even been talking about our feelings a lot. So it's been really good to catch up with everybody. How's everything going in the world of the library? Well, it's a little weird because I work at two schools, um, but I've been making some read aloud videos and posting them on the YouTube channel for both of the schools and hopefully people are watching. But even if they're not watching, hopefully they're doing lots of reading at home. <laughs> I know my students have loved those videos, so thanks for posting. Oh, my pleasure. Hey, you know, it's April and April is National Poetry Month. And I was thinking for our read aloud today, it'd be great if we could read some poetry to the kids. Sure, I think that's a great idea. Um, and Mr. Robert, I've got to say, this makes me think about a book that you suggested for my class last year. Uh -huh. uh, you recommended the book Gaiku. And this is such a special book that has a lot of really special poems that actually come from a country called Japan. Um, and these poems are called haikus. This whole book is written in haikus. My students loved it. And I really think that the people watching this video are gonna enjoy it too. Do you mind if maybe we read it today for our lesson? I think that's a great idea. Let's get started. Awesome. All right, so I have the book Gaiku by Bob Raska and illustrated by Peter Reynolds. And I've put all of the pictures and text on a PowerPoint. And so I'm gonna share the screen with us. Um, Mr. Stack, you want to talk about haikus? Yeah, I would love to. Okay, so haiku poems are really special poems. They're pretty short. They only have three lines. And in each line, there's a certain amount of syllables. That's another really special part of haikus. The first line has five syllables. The second line has seven syllables. And the final line has five syllables again. So as we're reading this text today, you're going to get to see a lot of haikus and just how they look and how many syllables are in each line. All right, so this is Gaiku, A Year of Haiku for Boys, and the author is Bob Raska. And I mentioned the illustrator is Peter H. Reynolds. And as you're looking at the pictures in this book, some of the illustrations might look familiar to you or the style of the illustrations might look familiar. Peter H. Reynolds is the author and the illustrator of a book called The Word Collector, mm -hmm. which is one of the nominees for the Washington Children's Choice Picture Book Award um, for this year. And I don't know if we'll be able to vote, Mr. Stack. Um, you know, I don't know, Mr. O'Brien. My kids love that book. We might have to find a way to do voting this year. I'll have to find <laughs> out from librarians how they're planning on doing that. All right. Gaiku. Spring. The wind and I play tug of war with my new kite. The wind is winning. I free grasshopper from his tight ten fingered cage. He tickles too much. With baseball cards and clothes pins, we make our bikes sound like motorcycles. In a rushing stream, we turn rocks into a dam. Hours flow by us. Oh, Mr. Robert, I'm making a super strong connection to this part of the text right here. Oh, really? I'm remembering when I was a young kid, we used to go down to this little stream at a park by my house. We'd put these really big rocks in and these big logs and we'd make little bridges. This section reminds me a lot of when I was a kid. Is that something you did with friends or with your brother? It's something I would do with my brother. We would go down probably once a week and play at the park. Oh, cool. If this puddle could talk, I think it would tell me to splash my sister. I watch the worm squirm 
and decide to bait my hook with hot dog instead. Hey, Mr. Stack, don't, don't I remember you saying you're going to go fishing with your brother sometime soon? Oh, my gosh. Thanks for asking, Mr. Robert. Yeah, speaking of my brother again, he loves to go fishing. And again, I'm making a connection to this part of the text. I can see that person sitting on the dock. They've got their fishing reel ready, their fishing pole, and looks like they've used a little piece of hot dog to try to hopefully catch a fish. Exactly. Maybe you can use hot dog when you and your brother go fishing. Maybe that's the secret trick. <laughs> Summer. Pine trees invites me. Pine tree invites me to climb him up to the sky. How can I refuse? Mosquito lands on my cheek. I try to slap her, but I just slap me. <laughs> Lying on the lawn, we study the blackboard sky, connecting the dots. Skip, 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 plonk. Five ripple rings in a row, my best throw ever. Penny on the rail, you used to look like Lincoln before you got smooshed. With the ember end of my long marshmallow stick, I draw on the dark. I might do that tonight. I'm planning on roasting some marshmallows tonight. No, oh, what a great idea, Mr. Robert. Perfect, perfect weather for it too. Mm-hmm. Fall. Hey, who turned off all the crickets? I'm not ready for summer to end. We follow deer tracks in the mud, pretending that we are too, we too are wild beasts. Helicopters spin in squadrons from our maple. I almost caught one. The best part about kicking this stone home from school is there are no rules. From underneath the leaf pile, my invisible brother is giggling. Oh, Mr. Robert, I'm looking uh -huh. at this illustration and I love how Peter Reynolds, the illustrator, has added little movement lines on the outside of the mound. You can really see how the brother's giggling, even though he's hidden under all those leaves. Uh, that's the sign of a good artist. I have to say, whenever I'm drawing stuff, I, I rarely think about putting in <laughs> movement lines. Pounding fat cattails on a park bench near the pond, we make a snowstorm. Winter. Winter must be here. Every time I open my mouth, a cloud comes out. How many million flakes will it take to make a snow day tomorrow? Two splotches of white on a black tree trunk. I aim my next pitch, strike three. Icicles dangle, begging to be broken off for a short sword fight. It's silent under these pine boughs sagging with snow, like hibernating. Last week's snowman looks under the weather. Must be a spring allergy. <laughs> I have a connection. I had to take my medicine earlier today because 
the spring allergies get to me for sure. Mm -hmm. Oh, and look, there's the 575, just like you were talking about, Mr. Stack. Oh, look at that. So clever, Peter Reynolds. And that is the end of Gaiku. All righty, and we are back. All right, so for this next segment, Mr. Robert is going to lead us in a new math game. Why don't you take it away, Mr. Robert? All right, thanks, Mr. Stack. If you were watching last week, and if you've been watching the second and third grade lessons this week, last week we played, Miss Wilson and I played a game called Pig, and this week the two teachers have played a game called Pig, Last Man, Odd Man Out, Odd Man Out. And so the way that it works is like this. You've got two dice. So I've got my two dice. Mr. Stack has his two dice. We've each got our score sheet. And um, we're going to take turns. Mr. Stack is going to roll his two dice. And he's going to multiply the two numbers on his dice. If his product, if his answer is odd, he loses any points that he has not put in the bank. But if, if he rolls a product uh, that's even... He can decide, OK, do I want to put these points in my bank or do I want to roll again and add on to that? And he keeps on going until he decides to bank. Remember, if you roll a product that's odd, you lose all of your points. And we're going to go up to, let's go up to 200, Mr. Stack. Sounds good, Mr. Robert. All right. Do you want to go first? Yeah, sure. Now, um, second and third graders and whoever's watching at home right now. So you'll notice that I'm going to be keeping track of my score one way. And Mr. Robert is going to be keeping track of his score another way. There are lots of different strategies we can use to multiply and solve problems. And whatever works best for you is the strategy you should use. You're going to see me keep track of my math in my head. You're going to see Mr. Robert keep track of his work on his table. So don't be surprised when you see us solving a little bit differently. Thanks for being flexible with us. All right, Mr. Robert, I'm going to roll. And I can't show you the dice roll here. I promise I'm telling the truth. I know you wouldn't dare <laughs> try to trick me. All right, Mr. Robert. So I rolled a two and I rolled a one. And right away, I know that two times one is going to give me two. I want to get to 200. And I don't think that two is the highest roll. So I don't think I'm going to bank that. I'm going to keep on going. All right. I'm going to write down my two just so I can keep track of it here. It's not in my bank, though. Just on the side. All right, bigger roll, please. Oh, my gosh. This time, Mr. Stack got three, and I got one. And I know three times one, or three one time, is just three. So I've got two, and I've got three more for a grand total of five. I think I'm going to keep going. You know what, Mr. Stack? Three times one is an odd number. Oh, my goodness. It is such a good thing to have you here, Mr. Robert. Wow. It is odd man out, odd person out. So, all right. I guess I lose those five points. Thanks for reminding me. It's all you, Mr. Robert. Good luck. Thank you. All right. I'm going to roll. And I got a four and a one. So I'm going to use my grid here. One times four equals four. So I've got four. And I'm going to put it on the side, just like Mr. Stack did. But, and I'll write bank. I like the way you did that, Mr. Stack. Bank. But you know what? I'm not going to put it in my bank yet. I'm going to roll it. <laughs> and it went way over there. I got a four <laughs> and a six. Ooh, great roll, Mr. Over. Right. A four and a six. So, Four times six, there's four, and I'll go over to the six. Four times six is 24. Good one. So now I've got 24 and a four. I think I'm going to bank that. 24 plus four equals 28. So I'm going to put my 28 in the bank, and it's your turn, Mr. Staff. Nice work, Mr. Obey. Let's see if I can catch up. Hopefully the dice are a little kinder this time. All right, well, maybe not quite. I got a two and I got a one again. I already solved that problem earlier. I know that that's two. I'll keep track it's of that. It's a number. It's a, that's a start, that's right. Are you gonna put All it right. in the I'm, oh no, I, I think I'm gonna keep on going. I'm feeling optimistic. All right, I got a four and I got a three. And I know that four, three times, four, eight, 12 is gonna give me 12. Since 
I am a decent amount behind you still. I'm going to keep on rolling. I'm not going to bank that amount just yet. Come on, dice. Ugh, Mr. Robert. I got greedy. I got a three and a one. And I know three times one is three, which is an odd number. So, man, I feel the luck coming. Maybe it's just going to wait a couple turns. It's all you. All right. Good luck next time, Mr. Stack. Thanks, Mr. Robert. All right. I got a six and a one. And one, six times is six. So I'm going to write my six here, keep track of that, and I'm going to spend one more time. Maybe two. Well, at least one. <laughs> I got a one and a five. And I know that one, five times equals five, and that's an odd number. Mm. So I did not put that six in the bank, so I lose that, and I stay at 28. Your turn, Mr. Stack. Man, those pesky odd numbers just keep getting us, Mr. Robert. All right, let's put some points on the board. I got a, f I got a five, and I got a one. And I, I know just that got five that. times one is going to give me five, just like you saw. So, oh well. Better luck next time. Good luck, I Mr. Robert. Out. I got a two and a two. All right. So I know that two, two times one, two equals four. Two times two equals four. Um, I'll spend one more time. I'll write that four on the side. I'm not gonna put in my bank yet. One more roll, I promise one. Uh-oh. A six and a six. <gasps> Whoa, Mr. Robert, that is huge. I think that's the biggest score you can get in this game. You're right, yeah. Six and a six. So, six times six, here's six, and I'm gonna go over six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. I get to 36. So, I've got 36 plus four, which equals 40. I'm gonna put those 40 points in the bank, and I'm gonna add the 40 to the 28, and that gives me 68 points in the bank. Wow, great work, Mr. Robert. All right, you know what, Mr. Stack? I think you and I should keep on playing off camera, and we're going to see who gets to 200 first. Sound sounds, good? Sounds like a great plan to me, Mr. Robert. Good luck, Mr. Stack. Good luck, Mr. Robert. Hey, Mr. Stack. Good game. Good game, Mr. Robert. Wow. What an exciting one that was. It was pretty exciting, I do have to say. It was and, really exciting. And satisfying. Not just because I won, because <laughs> we both won because we both had fun. And we did have a... And oh. we got smart. And we did get smart. Sorry, Mr. Robert, I'm just no, talking right over top of you. <laughs> Although, if it's okay, I do want to show everyone who's watching just how close this game really was. Absolutely. So, everybody, you saw how close Mr. Robert and I were at the beginning. We were making little teeny rolls, and pulling lots of odd numbers. Well, things really started to get exciting once we started playing on our own. And Mr. Stack wound up getting a score of 198, and I decided to put that money in the bank. Mr. Robert, I think, had like 40 points or 30 points, and I thought I was pretty sure to win. Mr. Robert, do you want to show what your score was at the end? I had, um, I had 68 points at that point. And so I was like behind 68 to 198, and I wound up with 202. Don't ask me how it happened, but <laughs> but I got some lucky rolls there. So, well, I'm really glad that we were able to play together, Mr. Robert. I always love playing math games with you, and it just goes to show you: never ever throw in the towel. You never know what's going to happen. Never give up. And you know what? The thing is, um, there were some times when I could have been cautious earlier, mm -hmm. but you had 198, and so I knew, well, I I've just got to keep on rolling. Right. Because all he needs is two points, and all he needs is one even roll. And anyway, I got lucky, but it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Thanks, Mr. Robert. Thanks, um, Mr. Stack. Yeah, you know, and I had such a great time playing at my table, but I got to get my body moving a little bit. So I'm thinking we could do a little movement with the people who are watching. Would you help me with this? And let me just say, everybody who's watching out there, 
if I can do this movement, you can do it too. So get <laughs> up. Perfect. All right, I'm gonna take you on a little field trip here, everybody, of my living room. So I'm gonna angle you down here just a little bit. And today, all you're gonna need for our short workout is a positive attitude and a floor. That's all so, you need. That's all you need. Um, so today we're gonna be activating our shoulder muscles, our triceps, and some of our back muscles as well. We're gonna be doing what are called renegade rows. And we're gonna do that by starting first in a good, strong plank. Now your plank, you're gonna put your hands on the floor and you're gonna start with your knees on the ground. Now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna make your back nice and straight, stick one leg out, stick the other leg out and keep your body nice and strong. Now, as we do this workout, we're going to wind up turning our body over just a little bit and pulling this arm over top. We're going to count five for that because we got five fingers. Nice job, Mr. Robert. Okay, I'm ready when you are. All right, let's do it. And will you help me count by fives from those, Mr. Robert? Are we going up to ten? Let's, I think we can do, let's do 15. Are you ready? I can do more than that. Whatever you were going to do, Mr. Stack. Perfect. Let's start at 15. Okay. Starting together in three, two, one, go. Five. 10. 15. Go ahead and take a break. Now, Mr. Robert, while we're exercising, yeah. for my friends out there who use different special kinds of tools to help you get around, wheelchairs or crutches, we also want to make sure that you have a chance to work out too. So to activate your shoulders, instead of doing what we're doing, you can also take your arms and just go ahead and push them up toward the sky and come back down and toward the sky and come back down and toward the sky, and come back down. Nice work. There's a modification in this workout for everybody. So that's just one way we can keep our bodies active while also practicing our math skills. Thanks for working out with me, Mr. Mr. Robert. My pleasure, Mr. Stack. Mr. Stack, thanks so much for that movement. Oh, thanks for joining me, Mr. Robert. Always happy to exercise during our math lessons. Mr. Stack, will you remind us again about how you form a haiku? Yeah, of course. So a haiku is a really special type of poem because of what's called a structure, the way that it's built. So it has three separate lines, and each line has a different number of syllables. The first line has five syllables, the second line has seven syllables, and the third line has five syllables again. So how many syllables is that all together? So let's see here. Mm, that is going to be 17 syllables. 17 syllables. You know what? I wonder how many syllables there were from all of the haikus in that book. That's a great question. But wait, Mr. Robert, do you know off the top of your head how many haikus were in the entire book? I actually do. For each of the four seasons, there were six haikus written. Okay. So six, 12, 18, 24. There are 24 haikus total. Okay. And 17 syllables for each haiku. Hmm. How do I figure that out? Interesting. Well, I'm thinking that multiplication would be a really great tool for us to use right now mm -hmm. to figure out how many total syllables are in this entire book. So if we were going to write this as a multiplication sentence, I think we'd want to take the total number of haikus times the number of syllables in each haiku. So correct me if I'm wrong, but that would be 24 haikus times 17 syllables. Is that correct? You are correct. OK, perfect. Do you know what 24 times 17 is off the top of your head? You know, I don't have a clue. So why don't we break this up? Sure. I'll take part of the, I'll do part of the job and you do part of the job. Mm -hmm. How about you figure out, let's see. So 17, if I was to break 17 up, 17 is a 10 and a seven. Mm -hmm. So how about I figure out what 24 sevens is. Okay. And you figure out what 24 tens is. 
Sure, you're thinking we could take apart that 17 and solve the problem by using partial products to help us solve. Exactly. What a and cool then we'll get idea. back together and we'll add our partial products. Yeah, I think that sounds great. Okay, so you go first. All right, perfect. Well, Mr. Robert, I know that if I take 24 and I multiply that by 10, that I'm going to wind up with 240 syllables. And I know that because if I took 24 and I added 24 together 10 times, I would wind up with the number 240. So 240 syllables so far, but we're not done yet. We've got to figure out how much those extra seven haikus, or pardon me, that extra seven times 24 is going to give us. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to break up that 24 into 10 and 10 and 4. Mm. Um, and so I'm going to figure out what 10 times 7 is and then 10 times 7 and then 4 times 7. Because what I'm doing is I'm multiplying 24 times 7 over here to figure sure. out my, my part. So 10 times 7 Here's my sevens, and I want to go over 10 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten equals 70. 10 mm. times 7 equals 70. So we've got 70 here. And I just said 10 times 7 equals 70. And now 4 times 7. I'll go to my sevens. Let's go over 4 times. 1, 2, 3, 4 is 28. 20. Eight. So I'm going to get a total of 168 syllables. Got it. Um, for my part. So now you said, what was your total? So I got, let's see here. I had 24 times 10. Hope you can see that okay. And I wound up with 200, oops, there it is, 240 right. syllables. So you had 240 syllables. And I had 168 syllables. So if we add those partial products together, then we should find out how many syllables there were total in that book of 24 haikus. Awesome. I can't wait to find out. Zero plus eight equals eight. Four tens plus six tens equal ten tens. Yeah, and Mr. Robert, we talked about this way back when you and I first started these lessons. We know that we can't have ten of any digit in one place we have to bundle them and move them next door so 10 tens we know is the same amount as 100 so we're going to put zero tens in the tens place and we're going to box up that group of 10 tens and move it over to where it belongs the hundreds place and then we've got 100 plus 200 plus 100 equals that's going to be four so 408 Oh my goodness, 408 syllables in this entire text. That is wild. Mr. Robert, great work. It's a lot of syllables. Yes. Hey, Mr. Stack, I have yes. had so much fun learning about haikus. Guess what? I wrote a haiku. You did. I can't wait to hear it. I wrote a haiku, and my haiku is about my kids. I had to do it. And this is how my haiku goes. It goes... And it's got five syllables, seven syllables, and five syllables. At least I hope it does. My always loved to. Diapers, kids bop, mortarboards, babies to badgers. That's my haiku. Oh, Mr. Robert, I love it. And thanks for showing pictures of your family, too. What a neat thing to share. Um, you know, Mr. Robert, I've got to confess, I also wrote a a haiku. Did um, you? I did. And I shared with you that recently I got a new dog. You did. Um, so I thought, what better thing to write about than my new furry friend? So I wrote mine in my notebook and I called it a new friend. Swish, woof, lick, bark, bark. Welcome to our cozy home. So glad you are here. Ah. And it follows the same structure that we talked about, five, seven, five. I wish I could show him to you right now, but 
I think he's a little shy. So uh, maybe okay. next time. Maybe next time. He's a cutie, though. He is a cutie. And tell him, tell everybody his name. Oh, his name is Goody. We named him after one of our favorite baseball players. We're really happy to have him. Mr. Stack, this has been so much fun. Oh, Mr. Robert, it's always a blast spending time with you and spending time with everybody who's watching our videos, too. We really appreciate you being here. Keep on learning. Even though we can't be at school, we hope that you will never stop learning, but we hope to see you back in school soon. We can't wait, and it's going to be over before you know it. Thanks for being here. Take care, everyone. Bye, everybody.